All right. It looks like we're live. Okay, it says we're live now. All right. So this is the almost the um, next to the last chapter. So we um, my book is eight chapters long. The art of grooming. This is chapter seven. So after this, we only have one more chapter left, and we are done with the book. And I figure, you know, I'll go ahead and just get this done tonight because it's only five short, uh, short pages. So here we are. Chapter seven, the importance of grooming tools. It's the groomer's chisel. A comfortable pair of shears for a dog groomer is like a comfortable pair of shoes for an athlete. It tremendously helps our game. Practicing controlled movements and feeling comfortable cutting hair with the shears and clippers will get you over any nervousness you may feel about cutting dog hair. Oh, what's up, Kyle Martin? <laughs> uh, so, the thing is, I know when I was when I first started grooming, I would feel anxiety with every single groom that every single dog that I was going to do a haircut on. I would feel nervous, anxiety. All of that goes away. Once you master controlling your scissors and your clippers, and you really understand how to hold them, how it works, and you, you feel more confident in your ability to control your shears, that gives you confidence in the grooms. All right. Lee Riley, good evening. And Pauline, how are you? Amateur super fan. Wow, the party has started. <laughs> I actually wanted to just kind of slip in and slip out. I didn't think anybody would actually join. But thank you so much, guys. Okay. The tool should feel like an extension of your own hand. The best advice I can give someone is to go somewhere where you can actually hold and test out the shears before buying them. I borrowed money from my mother to buy my first set of shears online, only to find out they don't really fit my hand comfortably, and they are too big and heavy compared to the kind of shears I prefer to use. In Atlanta, we have the Atlanta Pet Fair each spring, and we, we usually wait to buy our equipment there at the trade show so that we can feel and test out the tools before buying them. I would highly recommend going to a grooming trade show in your area to actually hold and try, uh, try out shears or any other grooming tool before you buy them. The people there will also have a wealth of knowledge to share with you as well as well like how to hold the shears for maximum control and proper maintenance. Art is about control. Beautiful paintings, beautiful music, and beautiful performances are all about control. The better you learn to control your shears, the better you can express the image you have in your mind. The most important thing is to first see the finished look you desire and then snip off the hairs that stick out. Good grooming is not about how much hair you're able to cut off, but knowing where and how much to cut. A professional groomer doing a demonstration on a doodle told us, in, told us in the audience to groom with structure and you can never go wrong. And that was actually Christina Pulaski. Um, I don't know why I didn't put that in the book because I actually really like her, but um, it was Christina Pulaski. She would say, groom with structure and you can never go wrong. If you know the correct angles for the canine body, you will know where and how to make each snip. <clears throat> oh, Buffy, wow, hello, Jane, long time. Yeah, it has been a long time. Wow, I haven't seen you since the other channel, right? Anyways, thank you so much for joining, Buffy. I really appreciate that. Uh, amateur super fan. Testing is so crucial. Kenchi Love is usually a good bet for budget, but really reliable set. I bought those sight unseen and was blown away. Nice. Thank you for that recommendation, uh, amateur super fan. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I actually joined the Scissor of the Month Club, and so we get um, we get to try out different scissors every month. It's only forty five dollars a month if you sign up for the year for twelve months, and I've really been enjoying them and getting different shears that I never would have actually picked to buy online. Um, if it was me just browsing online, I never would have picked these shears, but they actually like them. Well, one of them I don't really like that much, but it's okay. I like the other three that came in so far. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, I, I really think that unless you're doing like a Scissor of the Month Club where you're paying a really low price to try out new shears that you wouldn't have tried, you know, um, you know, usually you wouldn't have normally tried. Uh, unless you're doing something like that, 
I really recommend actually holding and trying the shear, seeing how it fits your hand first. And, and it really is kind of like an athlete, like, like a marathon runner or, you know, someone who does like, you know, speed running. It's, it's like trying on shoes before you buy them. It really, you want to make sure it's a good fit. Um, amateur super fan, name the scissor of the month club. Sounds interesting. It's uh, Foxy Roxy. Foxy Roxy Scissor of the Month Club. Um, on Facebook, you can find them, Foxy Roxy Scissor of the Month Club, I think it's called. Um, or you can go online, Foxy Roxy Supply Company. I think it's Foxy Roxy Supply Co.com. But, anyways, you can just Google it, Foxy Roxy. Go on their website and you can sign up. All right. <clears throat> Using clippers is a great way to save time and set an easy and uh, set an even length. Let me try that again <clears throat> Again, like I said, I <laughs> I Haven't read my book in a long time and I was trying to record an audiobook version of it um, for audible um, I, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna go through with that though because once I get it, once I get it read here on YouTube, I mean, anybody who wants to listen to it can just listen to it on YouTube. And it really felt like work. And I told myself, the moment all of this social media stuff and everything, the moment it starts to feel like work, and I'm actually pushing product, and I'm trying to sell things, I'm not gonna do it. I told myself that. That was a promise I made to myself. And again, I, I, I said in the last time, last stream, it's okay to break other people's rules, but try not to break your own rules, right? And so, uh, I never got past chapter three. <laughs> I never got past chapter three. So right now I'm kind of treading new territory here. So if I mess up on uh, more paragraphs than usual, um, please understand. I haven't read my. I haven't read chapter seven since I <laughs> since I published it. Okay. <clears throat> here we go. This is on page fifty three. Using clippers is a great way to save time and set an even length when you're grooming a dog with long hair, like a golden doodle. A good friend of mine, and an amazing groomer himself, once told me that holding a pair of clippers should feel like holding a pen or pencil. It is a groomer's paintbrush. I have developed a slightly different perspective on clippers. I believe it's the groomer's chisel. Michelangelo said of his legendary statue of King David, that he did not create King David. He said it was already there, and all he did was chisel away the excess. Isn't that awesome? I believe that that is what we do with our clippers and scissors. It doesn't matter what brand of clippers you prefer to use, they are just tools to help you chisel away the excess of a shaggy Lhasa mix to bring out the beautiful girl that was in there all along. Our hearts and minds are the most important grooming tools, tools we have. And our grooming tools are there only to help us express the beauty that is inside our minds. Learning to use all the different tools and equipment is very important as a professional groomer. And the knowledge of how and when to use them will be invaluable to you. You know, when I first started in the business, in this industry. I started as a bather, and I remember one of the lessons that the guy teaching me said, I mean, there's a lot of bad things about that place, but one good thing that I took out of there is he, was, he, was, he always stressed the importance of knowing how and when to use each tool. Each carding tool, the combs, the brush, the rakes, the, the stripping knives, everything. You know, he was saying, Knowing what tool does what and, and what tool would be the most efficient in certain situations is going to cut down your, your grooming time it's, you know, and you're, you're going to be able to groom much more efficiently, much more confidently and reduce the chances of reduce the risk of actually accidentally brush burning a dog or causing too much irritation to the skin and causing it to turn red and raw. So you can avoid all that by knowing which tools to use and how to how and when to use them. All right, <clears throat> going back to the book here. <clears throat> Knowledge and wisdom come with experience, and there is no substitute for experience. We must do something over and over again in order to get good at it. Les Brown says, practice makes improvements, not perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. Practice makes improvements. 
Practice control because art and beauty is about control. Groomers must not only practice the physical control of our bodies and the tools we use, but control over our mental faculties as well. We must control our emotions, our thoughts, and our feelings. Remember the Jedi would say, be mindful of your thoughts, young Jedi. Our minds are incredibly beautiful. I know this because I see evidence of this fact all around me every day. I see pictures in grooming magazines that are breathtaking. On Instagram, for example, man, it's inspiring to see the artwork of other groomers like Rose and Friends Pet Care, Pet Services. It's, I think it's Rose and Friends Pet Care. There's Grooms by Janine. Um, there's Bow Wow Dog Services. Um, there's so many. Jenna Lisa, can't forget her. But there's so many amazing groomers on Instagram. I love looking at their work because it inspires me as an artist. Uh, poodles that look like marble statues rather than living do live dogs and Bijan frises that look like perfectly round snowballs. Those amazing haircuts first had to originate in somebody's mind before they became a physical reality. When I'm scissoring in the angulations for a po poodle, I constantly remind myself that it is not my fingers or hands or my physical body that is designing the cut. It is my mind that is doing the designing, and my mind tells my elbows to stay tucked in, my hands to hold the shears still, and my fingers to make controlled cut. It all starts with the mind. So clear your mind, and make sure you have a clear image in your head of what you are trying to accomplish. Remember to stay focused. Many unnecessary accidents happen because of, of a moment of distraction. I would also suggest looking at a lot of pictures of dogs that are well-groomed. Perhaps Google search images of champions to see what they look like and study them in detail. Once you know what the dog is supposed to look like, all that is left for you to do is to chisel away the excess. Be a Jedi groomer, using your shears like a lightsaber, and your clippers is your laser beam gun. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote that. If you're, not a sci if you're not into sci-fi, then you could pretend that you are Michelangelo, the great artist. Either put, put your mind, uh, either way, put your mind and body in a calm, assertive state of being. Visualize the finished cut and believe in your own unlimited potential. We can, we can do anything because God, we can do anything because with God, all things are possible. And Here's the thing, you may not be religious, but that's okay. Here's how I see God. When you take a drop from the ocean, you cannot say that this drop is the ocean. That's not true, that would be an untrue statement. It would be incorrect to say that this drop is the ocean. But you can say this drop came from the ocean, so all the properties that are true of the ocean are true of this drop because it came from the ocean. That's how I see, what I, that's what I believe God is. We are all drops of God. To say that I am God would be <laughs> incredibly untrue and very incorrect, right? To say, it would be blasphemous to say I am God, right? But to say that I come from God, I am a drop of God, a unique expression of God, and all the properties that are true of God are therefore true of me. I can be creative, I can be compassionate and loving, you know, I can be helpful to others, things like that. I can also be destructive as well, but you know, that's, that's just the, the dark side of the force, right? So I believe that we are all drops of God. You are a drop of God. You are a unique expression of God. We are all pieces of the puzzle. And I always tell my daughters, just because a, what, a puzzle piece looks very disfigured, it maybe looks ugly in, in our opinion, it's shaped really ugly, that piece is still important to the puzzle, to, to the whole piece, the whole puzzle. Because if you discarded one piece because of how jagged the edges are and you don't, you don't like the way it looks, and you throw that piece away, you discard it, then the puzzle doesn't work, right? the puzzle would always be incomplete. And I asked my daughter one time, 
What do you think would happen if all the edge pieces, all the pieces on the edge that have one flat side, some the corners would have two flat sides. What if they all got together and decided that all the other pieces should have a flat side too, right? Then again, the pieces wouldn't work. We're not supposed to look like each other. We're not supposed to be like each other. We're all supposed to be unique and special. And that's why the puzzle works. Everyone has value. Every, we're all necessary. If you are here and you're alive on earth, you are necessary and you have value. You are enough. But just know that you have, if you have breath, you have God in you. And with God, all things are possible. Um, I didn't mean, I don't mean to get into like a religious, <laughs> spiritual thing in here, but it, and also one thing I would like to uh, say is Christina Pulaski also said, um, talking about how it all starts in your mind first, have a clear image of what you want to accomplish before you start to scissor. Um, Christina Pulaski says, start with the end goal in mind. Have the end goal in mind first before you begin the haircut. All right. <clears throat> Um, let's see, Kyle Martin, I need a hard copy of this. Oh, wow, thank you, Kyle Martin. You can get it on Amazon. But if you want it, if you don't mind just printing it out, just go to my website and you know, go to the article. You could search on my website, um, junethegroomer.com. I have an article that I, a blog article that's entitled, um, Download Both My Ebooks for Free. And then you just click the Google Drive link on the bottom, and then you can just print it out, and you'll have it in your hand. You know, if you don't want to, you know. But it's 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 only five ninety nine on Amazon if you wanted to get it. Anyways, Pinkie Pie, how are you, Pinkie Pie? Um, amateur June is hella deep. <laughs> I should have warned you guys get your boots on because it was gonna get pretty deep in here. I I didn't know. I didn't expect it to get deep. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Let's see here. Okay. If you are interested in proper breed patterns and learning how to set the lines properly, there are many great step-by-step -step guides such as Notes from the Grooming Table by Melissa Verplank. There are, are, there are many other great breed guides available and many breed profiles and instructional videos are available online as well. Especially these days. When I wrote this book about seven years ago, six, six seven years ago, um, there was not a lot out there, which is why I was so like heavy into making um, grooming videos, low production, homemade, you know, my other grooming channel during the groomer. Um, and I believe that's why it got so popular. It wasn't the production value. It wasn't the lighting. It wasn't the sound quality, you know, because all of that sucked. Let's just be honest. It sucked. But because I was actually trying to be helpful and I was trying to show people how to groom their own dogs at home if they needed to. Um, I think that's why it took off, <clears throat> but now there's plenty, and I really feel like I can kind of back off now. I don't have to make videos anymore because there's so many really well-produced videos being made now by a lot of YouTubers uh, who, are, who are groomers that have been grooming much longer than me. Go Groomer, Amy Lee, for example. Um, she's making really well-produced, and she's doing it all on her own. She's editing it all. Um, Grooms by Janine, she's, she's starting to make more YouTube videos now. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more YouTube videos being made um, and on Instagram as well. I really feel like I can, I can just back off now and just focus more on my own, my own clients, my business, you know, working my own land. Anyways, um, these, these are all important to learn and to know. But what is most important is our approach and how we apply new information that is presented to us. My marketing strategy has always been how happy the dogs are to see me when they come back for another grooming appointment and how calm and relaxed they are when they go home. If we take the proper steps before the bath and take the time to bathe and dry them completely, the haircut and styling almost always takes care of itself. The groom will also last for months and grow out smooth and evenly. The proof is in the pudding. Do an excellent job when carding the coat and the haircut will grow out evenly because you are working on the true length of hair after all the dead slash dying hairs are pulled out. Most groomers I've met are perfectionists by nature. I've chased plenty of dogs around with shears because I saw a stray hair. 
but we can save ourselves a lot of time and headache by just carding, by just properly carding out the coat prior to clipping and cutting. And that's the end of chapter seven. So, and <clears throat> I just wanted to add, um, I, I've chased a lot of dogs around, like I mentioned just there. I chased a lot of dogs around with scissors. One time, uh, one of the dogs was walking out of my shop, and I saw, like, you know, after she shook and she's walking, I saw hair sticking out that I didn't see before. And so I, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I grabbed my scissors, and I, I chased her out to the car. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, walking over to the dog. Like, she's, she's outside, outside, like, walking towards the, her, her car. And I have scissors in my hand. I'm going at the dog. And, the client was like, don't you dare, June. <laughs> she was like, don't you dare, it's okay. She's like, I don't even see it. She's like, get back in there. She's like, put the scissors down. Um, but yeah, like, we, we are much more critical of our own work sometimes than our clients are. Our clients, they, they just see their cute dog that they love. And as long as they look nice and clean and they're happy, that's all they really want. It doesn't have to be perfect every time. And that's something that I really had to learn and practice, that once the dog is done, be done, right? Once you put them down and they, they're off the table, be done and be okay with that, you know? And just know that there is no such thing as perfect, right? We always just make improvements. Um, Buffy. You're a serious yet funny guy. Love it. Oh, thank you, Buffy. I appreciate that. I try not to be so goofy now. It's, it's, it's a nervous tick, really. It's like, it's something that I do when I get nervous. I joke around and I really need to kind of stop that, tone that down a little bit, you know, especially at my Toastmasters meetings when I did a speech and that's something that they said too. They're like, we love your laugh. We love, you know, but sometimes like the self-deprecating humor and how I giggle sometimes out of nervousness, they're like, you know, you can kind of work on that a little bit. It kind of takes away from the professional, you know, the professional look, I guess, you know, the per perspective, the perception, professional perception, you know, how people perceive me. So yeah, that's something I can work on, is try not to joke around too much. <clears throat> um, Pinkie Pie, I, I highly recommend Jody Murphy's book, Dog Grooming Simplified, it's awesome. Wow, okay, I've, I've actually been hearing uh, some other groomers recommend Jody Murphy's book, The Dog Grooming Simplified. That's, thank you so much for mentioning that. <clears throat> and I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Jody Murphy, actually. Um, she's one of the, you know, one of the original groomers in the game, making those DVDs, those instructional DVDs and everything. Um, so yeah, I, and every time I've seen Jody Murphy at the trade shows, walking by, I've always, you know, like kind of waved to her because, you know, I recognize her, you know, I, I it's kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm a fanboy. And so I, I would wave and say hi. She's always been nice. She's always smiled and waved back, you know, and she's always been very friendly. And so that's, and that's not always true for a lot of the groomers that are well known and I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> Again, see, I'm getting nervous. Uh, so I'm gonna, but Jody Murphy is one of the good ones, in my opinion, from the experiences that I've had. I like Jody Murphy. Okay, um, Bonnie Lega, LOL, I do that too. <laughs> nice, nice to know that I'm not alone. Pinkie Pie, LOL, sounds like every day for me. <laughs> Buffy, those well-intentioned videos don't help this at-home pet owner. Thank God I've got at my favorite dog dad now to help. Phew, my dogs are thankful now too. Nice, my favorite dog dad. Uh, is, is it my favorite dog dad or our favorite dog dad? I think it is my favorite dog dad, David T. Nice. It, and I, I really enjoyed hanging out with David when he came down to Atlanta. Um, we had a great time. I like David. He's a good guy. And he's at, he has a good heart. He's coming from a really good place. Um, and we were talking a lot about why, he's, he, why, why does your channel exist, David? You know, why did you start My Favorite Dog Dad? And he was saying it's because you know, he's, he, he's run into so many issues where the breeders, they're just trying to sell their puppies and they don't really educate the, the new pet owners about how to actually care for the, their new puppy properly. Grooming, how grooming is a regular thing and hygiene and training 
their food, all of this stuff. He was like, there's so much to teach the new puppy owners, but most breeders just take the money and give them the, the puppy and they're done with it. And so he's saying that he wanted to create more awareness and, and educate the public, especially if they did buy a, a puppy from a breeder who didn't really take the time to teach them all this stuff. They just, they just took their check. Um, I heard that you know there's a term. Uh, some some people call them greeters, not breeders. You know because they're greedy, they're greeters. Anyways, so David David saw a problem that he knew he could help with, and that's why he created that channel. I was like, awesome, David. I I really we I, we I I think that we vibe because we had the same intentions. We just want to help. Um, Buffy says no, it's a good balance. Oh, nice. Thank you, Buffy. Pinkie Pie, she judged me once at a contest, and she was so great. So was Suze Echo, another, oh my goodness, Suze Echo, another amazing groomer that's so nice, so down to earth. Um, Sue Watson is another, oh my goodness, every time I see Sue Watson and her sister, Linza, uh, what is it? Oh my, I'm, I'm drawing a blank now. Shoot. Lisa Leedy, Lisa Leedy is Sue Watson's uh, sister. But anyways, uh, they're both super friendly, super sweet. I, they make me feel happy every time I see them um, just because of how cheerful they are and so encouraging. Um, and, and they don't have to be. They've made it, right? They're like on top of the, the, the game. They're like at the top of their game and on top of the grooming game, actually, you know? Like they're one of the top in the industry and they're super down to earth, super friendly. So I really like all of them. Sue Zeko, Sue Watson, Lisa Leedy, Jody Murphy. Um, Aries Sunshine, hi June, what's up Aries? Uh, Lee Rally, David T is awesome, funny guy too. Yeah, he is, he really is. Um, amateur super fan, I drove David at night to a foggy house with no lights once. Ooh. I'm sorry, amateur super fan. That must have been frightening. <laughs> that must have been, you must have been terrified. I've been in the car, I've been stuck in the car with David as well. And <laughs> things got a little rough. So rough, in fact, that I actually, I was like, time out, David, shut your mouth. I'm recording this. I'm getting you on record. So I actually have a podcast with David D uh, riding in my car. Anyways, I'm joking. He's, he's, a, he's awesome. Um, I actually was kind of sad when he left because I was like, man, like it, it, he spent the whole weekend here and, you know, we got to hang out and I was just like, man, I, I'm going to miss him, you know, shoot, that beautiful, that beautiful man. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I, I love David T, um, had a great time and um, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's really interesting. I didn't know amateur, I didn't, amateur super fan. I didn't know that you actually knew David and Buffy. Um, wow. This is awesome. Well, I knew Buffy, you're friends with David, right? Isn't he, isn't he staying with you or something? I don't know. Anyways, not to get, not to get too personal into David, into <laughs> the life of David T by Junior. And anyways, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, that was chapter seven. Uh, the importance of grooming tools. So just to sum it up real quick, it's super important, in my opinion, to be, to when you're a dog groomer, to execute a, a nice haircut, a good proper haircut, to practice controlling your shears and getting good control of the clippers and knowing the angles and understanding, having a clear picture in your mind what you want the dog to look like. You know, ha start with the end goal in mind, like Christina Pulaski would say. And, uh, con you know, control your scissors. Oh, also, um, use, think of it as a groomer's chisel. Just like Michelangelo said, I did not create the statue of David. He was already in the marble. I just had to chisel away the excess. The beautiful dog's already in there. Our job is to just chisel away the excess and knowing how and when to use each tool, knowing what the tool does and how to use it properly will be so beneficial and, and, and also in, it like increases your level of confidence 
so that when you approach a dog, no matter what the condition, no matter what the dog is, no matter what haircut you're trying to do, you feel confident and you know you can get it done. Uh, let's see, Buffy, my dogs look so much better now. Learned a lot, but I leave it to the professionals. He's made some great contacts here in Indiana. Nice, nice. Buffy says, yes, yes he is. I actually got a missed call from him. Um, he tried to Facebook call me earlier. I think it was earlier today or yesterday. Oh, I'm, I've been so busy. I've been just running around like crazy. Oh my goodness, I was doing dishes earlier. Like, <laughs> anyways, I, I'm doing. I like. I, I'm. I'm like running from one thing to another, constantly right racing against the clock. It's eleven. It's after eleven o'clock. I gotta get home because I got another big day tomorrow. But yeah, I, I, I kind of felt bad that I missed his his call. Um, but yeah, ask if you do talk to him, Buffy. Ask him. Ask him what the hell he wanted. No, <laughs> Contacting me. Don't you know I'm a busy guy? I was kidding. That was stupid. I don't know why I did that. Okay. Um, amateur Super Fan. Thanks, June. Love the live reads. Pinkie Pie. Thanks, June. Oh, thank you, guys. I really... Amateur Super Fan. Call him right now. Oh, should I? Should I call him right now? I'm totally ruining this live feed. <laughs> well, I mean, it's free, right? Shoot, it's a free reading of Chapter 7. If anybody was here just for the reading of Chapter 7, you know, you're free to go. But let me see here. Let me call him back, see if he actually answers. I'm going to video call him. Uh, Buffy says, probably today I kind of overwhelmed him with things to think about. Probably wanted to run it by you. Ah, oh, Lee, breathe. Thank you, Lee. <sighs> Breathing. All right, I got him on video. Calling David T. Why are there stars and all this coming up? Did I put a filter on here? Oh shoot, I just took a picture. No, delete that, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, it says not reachable. Hmm. I know what he's doing. He's probably like, he probably he probably actually saw, saw this. He's probably looking at the phone right now. He's like, nope, I'm not picking it up. You didn't pick up my phone call, I'm not picking up your phone call. That's the kind of guy he is, you know? An eye for an eye kind of guy. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, he probably not. Uh, Goose Frava. Yeah, exactly right. She, every, time I I, every time I think about this man, he ruffles my feathers. <sighs> Woosa. <laughs> I'm kidding. David, if, you're, if you ever watch this, I love you. Um, in the, the inappropriate kind of way, just so we're clear. I love you in the very inappropriate type of way. Um, the worst kind of way that it could be taken, I want you to take it that way. Brokeback style. You know what I'm saying, David? Okay, Buffy, he's coming. I just yelled down to him. But he's grabbing his computer right now. Try again. Oh, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm going to end this feed and then I'll talk to him. How about that? That way, you know. Oh, actually, should I? Should I just do it? Okay, let's just do it. Uh, oh, I got a message request from somebody. All right, I'm calling him now. Let's see if he picks up. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is on my live feed, on live chat too. Okay, everybody, let me see if I can. Look at this. How can you not? How can you not love this man? Look at this. Look at this. You guys see? <laughs> Yeah, what's that? Yeah. So what uh what I would like to know is what the hell did you want? You know what I'm saying? Calling me when you know I'm busy. You know do you do you know who the hell you're talking to right now? Do you know who I am? Do you know that do you know that I wrote this book? <laughs> Well, I, I hit the gym earlier. I was at the gym, you know. Um, I walked my dogs. I, I cooked. I cooked myself some dinner. How about that? I cook. I, I had to mix my dogs' food. You know what I'm saying? Dude, you don't. He, dude, you don't know me. Since he's watching, email him. 
know she had no idea that they put eggs on burgers until like I ordered one. She's like, why are you putting a, a fried egg on a burger? What other way would you eat a burger, right? How else do why burgers come? That? Yeah, with the yolk runny. With I need the yolk to be runny. You know, shoot, with some bacon on there. Anyways, <laughs> Buffy, you don't know. You don't know nothing about no burgers, Buffy. Shoot, you don't know how to eat no enjoy no burger. Anyways, um, <laughs> Muscle Jude. <laughs> well, yeah. Here's the thing. Um, I actually stopped, I, I didn't go to the gym for like a couple weeks, right? Cause just I, after the trip back from Houston, I just got caught up, I got busy and everything. And I just, I actually, I was like, it just, after you miss a couple of days, it got easier and easier to miss more days. And so two weeks goes by and I just got flabby. I just got flabby, everything just went away now, but oh my goodness. So I was like, what? And so anyways, I, I, I go, I'm back at the gym now. It's been about a few days, like the past week. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I, I've been I've been hitting the gym regularly again. Oh my goodness! But it, you know, it just goes to show, um, it, it, with anything, with with working our bodies, you know, make, make, you know, work going to the gym, um, being a good groomer, making sure your scissor skills stay sharp. Anything, I think anything it is, uh, going and doing public speaking stuff. If I miss a Toastmasters meeting one week, the next week I go, I feel rusty. You know, it's like, I think anything that we do, we have to constantly stay at it, right? If, we, if you start to... You have to, yeah. you have to be consistent with it. Yeah. 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 Buffy says, without an egg, the conversation started with dog food, ended with eggs on burgers. <laughs> That's what happens when you talk to David T. That's why I avoid it. I avoid it at all costs. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, because she, she said she was in the car with you. Uh huh. See, see. No, I don't. I don't. I don't watch any of your streams, actually. <laughs> I try to avoid it. I'm telling you, I'm a busy guy, man. Shoot. All right, no, no, no. So, so that leads into my. I just set you up, you know that, right? Because I like how that was a real answer, and you just did read me. Yeah. Okay. So I have, I have a question for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the whole Trump situation? Do you think he <laughs> How often do I actually brush wee me? Oh my god. <sighs> Put me on the spot, man. Shoot. Okay, I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be honest with you guys. Last time I brushed wee me. <laughs> last time I brushed wee me, like actually thoroughly brushed him out was when I went down to Orlando. So that was the end of that was the end of June uh, July, the first of July. So it's been a good month. <laughs> it's been over a month. Oh my God, it's been over a month since I actually combed him. So don't judge me, dude. Don't judge me, David. How do you live your life? <laughs> Yeah, I do. <laughs> but they also don't bump. Well, normal pet owners don't know how to do the grooming. But if they see somebody like you or me not brushing our dog all the time because we're so busy going to the gym and eating burgers with eggs on it, you brush your dog. Well, that's okay, but then when you do it, to do it right, the way that you do it. Yeah. You go in there and you want to do a thorough job. Like yeah. Yeah, well, and I did feel, I, I felt embarrassed. I actually didn't want to do that stream because I did feel so ashamed of the way he looked and how long it's been since I actually, it's, it was over a month since I actually combed him out. Because I'm like, you know. <laughs> wow. Wow. 
So this is why I don't enjoy talking to David. If you guys know, like he's very judgmental. You know, he's very judgmental. He likes to bring up. He has, he likes to hit below the belt. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. But see, I, I only brought that up because you kind of. I set you up nicely. I'll admit that. I said I led you down that path. You asked the question. Not the blind side. Oh uh, what? It's your stream. I mean, you only have yourself to blame. Well, it's another reason why I should probably not watch your live stream, right? <laughs> but yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll go ahead and um, I think I actually did I subscribe to your channel? <laughs> I don't pay attention to. Sorry. Anyways, but yeah, I'll pro I'll probably turn that on and watch it tonight. Maybe so I need something to sleep on, right? I need something to sleep to. I'll turn your stream on, and pass out. <laughs> There was some reason why I called you this afternoon, but I forgot what. Uh -huh. huh. I tend to have that effect on people. Starstruck, right? Starstruck. Yeah. Once you see me, once you actually start interacting with me, it's like, oh my god, I forgot what I was about to say. Right, David? Yeah, it was like that the whole time we were hanging out. <laughs> oh, man. So, speechless. I got him speechless. He doesn't even know what to say. Um... Uh, <laughs> Buffy says, don't let him throw shade, Jude. Exactly. Salty. He's just salty. That's all he is. He's salty. Um, <laughs> he mentioned his last week. Uh, Buffy says, I don't get it. David does, does it too. Said groomers should have the best looking dogs. He does. He does it the same thing. Long nails on his dog. Ooh. Buffy, thank you so much. Man, see that? Buffy got my back. What about them long nails, David? <laughs> but yeah, that's how it goes, though. You know, the 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 poppers kids have no sh shoes, right? No, it's not. The cobblers, it's not the popper. It's the cobbler. The cobblers kids have no shoes. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I guess uh, when you when you remember what you wanted to talk to me about, you know. <laughs> well, that's why I do them. That's why I make mistakes. I, some, I probably wanted some advice on what not to do. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That's why I live my life like this, so that I can give people a clear example of what not to do. Right? I'll make all the mistakes for you guys. This, that's how noble I am. See how honorable yeah. I am? Uh, <laughs> oh, actually, now the fuck he's there. I probably, you know, it's all seriousness. Part of my stream was what I'm doing now. Discussed that before, um, and you go into it a lot with the pricing of how you can't really compare yourself to someone else's pricing if you're doing something completely different. Yeah, exactly. Where I am right now, and where I am right now, it does seem fairly new that there's not many house call groomers around here, mm -hmm. and, but they're open to it. But um, setting, not setting the prices, but gauging those and being selective, I don't want to just start doing any dog, but I just want to do the behavior side, which is hard to handle dog, that's just an extra side of it. Uh, I'm just trying to be great on your marketing side, and how do you get started on that when you have, when you're, because you say someone's not compare yourself to other pricings, but in aspect, you kind of have to, so what do you just pull things out of the, out of the air and just do whatever? I lost interest about halfway through. I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> Any, no, just kidding. The marketing. I got you. The marketing. <laughs> um, here's what I here's what I say. I, I say like uh, your why, like why you do what you do. You know, make that very clear in your in your marketing, in your posts, in your videos. You know, always explain why this is so important to you. And um, I did a podcast recently. It was a speech I did actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've, I've been known to do a few, but uh, it was actually the speech I did at the Toastmasters. It's called Work Your Land, but the, basically my thing was to, you know, whatever, is, whatever task you're, is put in front of you, whatever you're doing, work that. Work your land to the best of your ability, and don't worry about other people's land, and don't worry about what other people are doing, you know, like, just work your land. Yeah. 
Yeah. And my land is my clients, uh, the people who watch my YouTube, who, who would miss me if I, if I stopped doing it. You know, it's like, this is my land, so I want to work it to the best of my ability. Show up and, and really, you know, do the difficult and necessary stuff, right? Okay, amateur super fan, I see your, I see your remark there as how much work it is and how much time it will take. But what I'm doing, you know, with Dede and how I got in there with doing that really aggressive dog, I'm also trying to add in the factor of I'm also willing to do what other people aren't. There's so many groomers that don't want to handle an aggressive dog, so how do I add that value into my pricing? And I'm trying to, as I'm figuring that out, I want to share that with all of you guys, but that's an extra step. Yeah, obviously, how, how long it's going to take from what I'm doing, the labor, all of that. But there's also, if you find that niche in your business that a lot of your groomers and you're trying to find that one niche, you need to factor that in also. You need to add value to that. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, um, the pricing. So one of my clients actually, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give details, but she emailed me recently, and she was saying, because um, we we scheduled for the rest of the year. She said starting in January, maybe she'd like to space the groomings out a little bit more because, um, you know, just things are going on in her in her life where she's saying it's 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 kind of becoming uh, tough on her budget, and so I actually lowered the I I, I sent her an email back and I told her. What if we did it at this price? And I lowered the price because, well, and I explained to her if we go, if we, go, you know, for me, you know, if, if we go further, like the longer the time goes in between grooms, the longer it takes, there's more work for me. So I told her it's purely selfish on my part. Um, but that's a joke, really. I mean, I, I want to make sure that I'm charging, I'm always charging less than what I'm actually, like, uh, what does it say? Always do more than what you're being paid for in order to make an investment in your own future, right? Yeah. And you always want to get over deliver value. Like you always want to make them feel like they've gotten more out of out of the deal than than what they paid, you know? Like they got more in use value than they paid in 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 money. So that's always how I, I try to do it. Because I feel like um, I never spend money on advertising or marketing. I never spent a dime on Facebook ads, nothing like that. Like, I don't spend any money advertising or trying to get new clients because I just try to take the best care of the clients I already have. And Jim Rohn says, if you will just forget about the money and you just serve the client to the best of your ability, they will take you by the hand and open doors for you that you never could have opened on your own. And actually for me, it's been true. Yeah. A lot of the millionaire clients that I have they came from the middle class clients that, that knew them, they're, they're friends with them, and they were the ones that opened that door for me. <clears throat> exactly, and I, I, and like the thing is, I, yeah, exactly, and I had no idea that their friends were millionaires. I just knew that I wanted to do the best I could for them. Oh, look at his dog, look at that shaggy, unkept dog. <laughs> no, it's good. She actually looks. She actually looks nice, but yeah, it's like when you for, when you just forget about the money and you just be of service and you try to serve them to the best of your ability. Then something about that generosity, I think it really touches people. It moves people, and and and, and also it's it's called social currency. If they know that you're you're something special and the way that you do your grooms and is something you know, that's not easily found or easily replicated, then by introducing you to one of their friends that are millionaires, it makes them look good too. So let's just, let's just be real, it's, it's called social currency. It makes them look cool, you know, to their friends who they, are, who they think are cool. So they're trying to impress their friends too, you know, let's just be real. So if you do a really good job for someone without even thinking about the price, then they will introduce you to other people who don't care about the price either. You know, like because they're so rich, they don't really care what you charge. I don't see it as they don't care about the price. It's more like they appreciate the value in your price. Like you're saying, you're doing more than you're actually charging. Them. Yeah, I, and I, 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 I always, I always say like I feel like the luckiest groom in the world because I have a few clients, and and the crazy thing is she asks me every time. Every time I go to her place and I do the groom, she always asks me again, "How much was it again?" And I always tell her. It was, you know, it's this price. And she pays me like four times the amount, I tell her. She pays like four times what I told her. Like it says, like with that one appointment, 
I'm good for the rest of the week. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, the last year when I was working in the shop, and I started doing a dog who was only four months old. The lady had means. She was only four months old, started bringing the dog every week, whether it was a tram, a car shot, a blow up, all these different things. She didn't care what I was charging. She understood I was working on commission at the time. And the store was getting whatever amount, but she would whatever I was charging, she paid. But then she made sure to give me twenty five dollars cash. Like, nice. Whatever I was doing, no matter what. And that's because she just knew that the work put into it, and actually, um, that was large referral base. And I didn't know that when I started. Yeah. And it's all word of mouth, man. Day afternoon, it was slow. I was I just was doing it not realizing and that ended up being one of my best clients best referrals and everything and yeah yeah you know so there's a book called contagious by jonah Berger, uh, like how things go viral and surprisingly enough all e like all the viral videos it's still word of mouth it's still one person emailing it to another person or sharing it to, with another person on on their personal facebook page and stuff it's still kind of word of mouth it's person to person sharing and that's how these videos get millions of views and so, yeah, it's all word of mouth, man. It re really, you can't, you can't really um, that, like, put a real, you can't quantify the, the value of word of mouth, right? Because it's just, it takes off. Uh, oh my goodness, CJ Johnson. She says, I would miss you, June. Oh, that's all. That's the thing. Um, Seth Godin says, says uh, it's not about trying to make a huge, like, you know, reach a huge audience. It's not about trying to make a mediocre impact on the masses, being trendy, being gimmicky. You know, it's about being real and genuine and so that the people who would actually miss you if you were gone, you know, they you make a big impact on a few. And that's exactly what I, I believe. I, I that's I've always been more comfortable with a smaller group of friends. And so that's this is what this is what's so special with me for me. Like I love this. Like Knowing that a few people would miss me if I stopped showing up, and that's that's really what motivates me and drives me. Um, let's see, super amateur super fan says every aggressive dog I get equals a <laughs> fuck you fee. Oh man, between five to twenty-five dollars. Buffy says he has mad respect for you, June. He messes with you because he values your opinion. Oh, look at that! Look at that! She's spilling all the beans. <laughs> It's a front. It's a front. Lights out. Lights out up there. <laughs> Buffy says, she only looks nice now because he went live yesterday. You should have seen her before that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he can't even say nothing because it's her place. He can't kick her out. He can't be like, that's it. You're out of here. She'd be like, nope. You're out of here, David. <laughs> I got June the Grimmer's back. Nice. I got friends, baby. I got friends everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Planted everywhere. <laughs> oh man, Pinkie Pie agree one hundred percent. My friend, oh okay, he just he said you want a burger, mm hmm, and he claims to go to the gym a lot because he. Author, the author of that book, it sounded like something burger. That's what it sounds. Like. Uh huh. Uh, you know, I actually, I actually make a mean burger. I actually, I, I, I make a pretty good burger. Anyways. I love cooking. Did you guys know that? I love cooking. I love uh, taking long walks in the in the with my dogs. Um, I, it was, it's, I'm making a Tinder file right now. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. Buffy says, "Stop being salty, David." You know what I'm saying? Why are you being salty? <laughs> It's, it's jealousy. It's envy. It's jealousy. He was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. See, see that facial hair right there. See that facial hair. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. A lot of groomers are starting to grow our backbones, and it's okay to say no to clients. Yes. Yes. When they're trying to lower prices on you, it's completely fine in your realm to just say no to them. Yeah, the power of no. Um, I think up until like two years ago, almost every groomer would be ashamed to turn somebody away, whether they didn't want to pay the price they were asking, or they were trying to do something they weren't comfortable doing. Yeah. If it's the same client coming to you over and over and keep trying to drop the price, 
that is a tricky one, but you have to value your own time first. Exactly. Time is is the most precious thing, and so you have to value it. Yeah, not just time, but your skills and your talents. It, it, because yeah, yeah it's so uh, it's the law of compensation, right? The law of compensation. You, you, the in, what you, the income that you earn is directly in re- ratio to these three things: the need for what you do, how well you are able to do it, and the level of difficulty would be to replace you. If you got those three things, man, you can pretty much name your price. You can write your own ticket. Within reason, of course. You don't want to be a burden on somebody's income. You know, uh, are, you reading Pinkie, are you reading Pinkie Pie's comments right now? You might want to catch up. Pinkie Pie, I have a question. I have a client that every time she brings her 80-pound dog, she keeps lowering the price, and every time I tell her no, it is what it is, and she always manipulates me down. What do I do? Oh, like, like, like David is saying, the power of no. Okay. Um, first, first of all, I don't, I don't really like how he's telling me what to do right now. This is how, this is how the conversation always goes. He starts getting pushy, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, <laughs> he's like a, because he thinks he's my boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? He thinks he's my boyfriend, and so he likes to. I'm answering her question. You're trying to jump in the conversation without even knowing what I'm talking about. You're just kind of. <laughs> yeah, because I, I'm, <laughs> I, I never know what he's talking about. Uh, okay, Buffy says, I got you, June. Nice. See that? I, I, I got that. Amateur suit. How does she lower the price? Pinkie Pie says, she'll say stuff like, oh, it's 50, right? And I say, no, it's 70. And she goes, oh, well, I only have 55. Mm-hmm. She does it every time. Buffy says, yep, you got that right. Tell him to get a haircut. <laughs> okay, oh, Buffy's... Uh, <laughs> If I ever if I ever get in another heated argument with you, I need I need Buffy's I need Buffy to be present in the in the conversation. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Amateur Supers, I wouldn't I wouldn't release the dog until I get my payment. Ooh. I, I don't know. That kind of stuff makes me feel uncomfortable. Buffy says, I know what you're saying, L O L. Uh, amateur super fan David, you still owe me a beer and a car ride. Ooh, amateur super fan says you still owe her a beer and a car ride, David. I don't know why you don't keep your promises with people. You know what I'm saying? People like that. Listen, amateur super fan was falling asleep. I offered we could have gone in, had drinks, played pool. I was more. I wasn't my <laughs> fault. Well, I think its cell phone died and was lost in the middle of Hershey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so there's more to this story than what Amateur Superfan is letting on. There's much more to this yep. story. Okay. All right. Did you keep your hands to yourself? Because he has a problem with that, I noticed, when he was driving the car with me, when I was driving the car with him, you know? Did he keep his hands to himself, Amateur Superfan? First of all, let me just apologize for what you had to go through, the ordeal that you had to experience <laughs> riding with David T in the car. <laughs> Anyways, uh... She says, yeah, that's true. But yeah, okay, so um, back to Pinkie Pie. Um, I had a client like that, and I just, I just told her, it's fine. You know, I'll, like, I'll, I'll accept it for now. But then when she went to schedule again, I, I made it very clear. This is the price, you know, and if you're not okay with that, I need to know. And, you know, you don't, like... I don't want to be a burden, but this is this is the, what I have to charge for my services in order to sustain my business. So, yeah, and, and I, it's it's the power of saying no, like David T was saying. You know, like it's sometimes by by putting your foot down and saying no, you think that they might they might not like you. They might think that you're a bad person. All this stuff. It, the opposite is true. They seem to respect you more because you're being clear. You're setting you're setting you know clear expectations. Like this is how I did, I expect to be treated, and this is how my clients treat me. And if you can't treat me like this, then you're not my client. You know, make it very clear. Draw a clear line in the sand. Um, yeah. Buffy says, "My favorite dog, Dad. It's his channel. Shut it, <laughs> Jude. You could accident you could accidentally on purpose hang up on him. <laughs> I do that every time we talk. I accidentally purposely hang up on him." <laughs> Lee, uh, well, she, Lee actually, I saw her comment what? saying that she learned, yeah. she loved the podcast that I did. Great podcast, learned a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, I saw her. I mean, 
why is she staying neutral right now? I would like to know if she has my back. <laughs> <laughs> no one's got your back. No one's got your back, David. I'm not sure if you do this, but... <laughs> this seems like I, I got ambushed here by... Well, now that now that you actually showed up before, when you weren't here, they were saying they were all saying nice things about you, but now that you actually showed up, you know, things have changed. <laughs> the temperature of the room has gone down. Um, Buffy says Lee Rally is here. Yeah, Lee is here. She's just she's she's grown disinterested because of how you just interrupted my live feed here. We were we were having a great time. Um, and this oh, is actually a very serious podcast where I was reading a, chapter seven of my book. I only called. I was calling you back. He, he's making it sound like I called him twice out of nowhere. No, I called you because I, you called me. You know, shoot. Um, Pinkie Pie says thanks. I have a hard time saying. Oh, what are you saying? Sorry for talking while you're interrupting, David. What were you saying? I think he might hang up on me. Hey, don't hang up on me. Don't, don't, please don't go. Baby, you know. Anyways. <laughs> okay. It's not just saying no. It's saying no, and you don't really, you don't really have to explain yourself why you're doing things, but as long as you have your rules and, like you said, drawing a line in the sand, putting your boundaries, that pretty much says no in itself. Yeah. Yeah, setting the ex and, and yeah, just letting so them know like I really heart, you can still have a big heart like you're saying you have big heart syndrome and you want to do those things, fine. But monetary value shouldn't be messed around with. That's something separate. Yeah, well, and the thing is, you it, it it also you feel icky, right? Kind of like what amateur super fan was saying, like you don't you don't you don't want to le release the dog until they pay you and. I don't know, for me, I just kind of feel like I don't want to twist someone's arm to pay me what I'm asking, you know? Because whenever I do that, I kind of feel like a bully, you know? Like, where's your lunch money? It's like, I don't have lunch money. I know it's there, you know? Like, I don't like be feeling like that. It, it's unsatisfying, it's unfulfilling. Even when I do get paid the full amount, if I had to twist their arm to get it, it's, I, I don't feel good about it. So, yeah, I, I like to just, if they, if they do, you know, do something like that, oh, I only have $55 on me, I thought it was 50 I'll, I'll usually say, okay, that's fine. I'll accept it this time. Um, but then the next time they try to schedule with me or the, in the emails, I will make it very clear. You know, I know that sometimes you forget how much I charge, but this is the fee. And I, I you know, this is what my clients are used to paying me because this is what I need to charge in order to sustain my business. Yeah. I mean, the only, the only looking at it maybe at the, per the other side of it if the person's really in a pinch and can't afford that price wants you to do it and you yeah. want to have a big part maybe maybe a way around that of accepting them to pay a little less is scheduling them a time that you're free and can afford to do that you can't have somebody do that on a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock in the morning when you have all these other clients waiting to be booked but if you're not doing anything on a Tuesday night and you know you're somewhat free and won't mind spending that time on them then you at least they're taking some control of the situation it's almost like when like a happy hour type thing all right we're slow i do this but you know if it's multiple times that they're just pulling that, that yeah up. yeah that client like, has to go because they don't really value you yeah, yeah they, they're yeah. not really valuing your services and your skills and your talents so what is that story where um, this this company is losing thousands of thousands of dollars <clears throat> every month because something's wrong with their their machinery, and so they hire this specialist that comes in, <clears throat> and within five minutes he he goes and he's like oh, and he tightens up a bolt, and everything starts to run smoothly again, and he charges them what five, five, I I don't really remember all the details of the story, but he charges them like five thousand dollars right, <clears throat> and the the guy's like. I, why, how, how, why are you charging $5,000? It only took you five minutes to figure out the problem. And he says, I'm not charging you $5,000 for the five minutes. I'm charging you $5,000 for knowing which bolt to fix, you know, which bolt to tighten. You know, like, that's the thing. It's, it's your skill, it's your intellectual property, IP. The experience, the skills, the intellectual property, all of this. 
this is what you're charging for. You're not just charging for your time. You're charging for your knowledge that you've accumulated and knowing where and how to snip the dog's hair, you know, knowing this is all valuable. This is, it takes years and years of experience to know how to get this dog groomed within a certain amount of time, right? So you're not charging for the time it took to groom the dog. You're charging for the years it took you to learn how to do this. <clears throat> but yeah, and so Amateur Super Fan says, you can, or you could go the opposite way and do a $55 worth of work instead of $70, $70 value. You see, that's where everyone's yeah. different. For me, I don't have, I don't have like a premium service and a medium service and a lower price service. I just have one service, my best. I always do my best no matter what I'm getting paid. And I adopted that philosophy from Jim Rohn. Oh my goodness, lights just went out. Okay, he turned it on just, I, I thought things were gonna get freaky. Anyways, <laughs> Jim Rohn says, there are two philosophies that you can live by. <laughs> one philosophy is, if this is all they're gonna pay, this is all I'm gonna do. The other philosophy is, no matter what they pay, I will always do my best. And so I've adopted the second philosophy. Everybody has to choose for themselves, you know, what they want to do. But for me, I don't have a different, like, I don't have tiers of service. I just have my best. And so that's why I, I have one fee for my services, and I don't charge for my time. Sometimes if it takes a little longer, or even if it takes less time, then it, the price doesn't change because I'm charging for my service, not my time, because time is priceless. Um, amateur super friend, it's not about being a bully. Don't book if you can't pay. That's not cool. Imagine telling your doctor you can't pay. They send you to collections and then you'll get a hundred phone calls a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but for me, I'd just rather not. I'd rather not do things like that. And just, I would just fire the client, you know, and just replace them with another client. Mr. Beans, what's up, Mr. Beans? Buffy, that was a great analogy. Mr. Bean, my dog is listening, by the way, LOL. Okay, watch your language, David. We got a, we got a little dog, watch, an innocent dog listening to our conversation. Buffy, this is why David called you. Ooh, he knew where to come. He knew what's up. He knew. <laughs> Anyways, oh man. So yeah, it's almost, wow, it's almost midnight. I gotta get going. <clears throat> I gotta get ready for tomorrow. But anyways, thank you everybody for joining me for this podcast. I mean, not podcast, for this uh, live reading of chapter seven. Uh, thank you for putting up with David T here, my, my favorite dog dad on YouTube. Thank you for tolerating him tonight. I find it hard to do. I find it hard to tolerate him sometimes, but you know, it's, it's a... Uh, Thank you, universe, for this opportunity to practice patience and acceptance. <laughs> I say that whenever I'm in traffic or something horrible happens, or something, you know, just a wrench gets thrown into my day. I take a deep breath and I say, thank you, universe, for this opportunity to practice patience and acceptance. And that's also what I do whenever David T calls me. <laughs> I'm kidding, David. Man, I don't even tease people like this because I, I feel uncomfortable. I don't like to hurt people's feelings, you know. But with David, oh, man, it's so fun. It's just so... <laughs> okay, Amateur Superman. June is really the Yoda of grooming. Oh, wow, thank you. Thank you. The Yoda, she says, I am. No, that's not a good impression. Anyways. <laughs> um... Thank you, Pie. Thank you, guys. It's been on my mind for a while. Your advice helps. Awesome. And some here's the thing, Pinkie Pie. Sometimes we're scared to lose that business. We're lose. We're scared to lose that client, or we're scared about what they might say about us. You know. Oh, Pinkie Pie's got money hungry. She just cares about the money. You know all this stuff. We're worried about that. You know. But sometimes the opposite is true. Right. She might actually value you more. And she might say good things about you. Or here's the thing. Let's just say that you do lose her as a client. Some, sometimes the people that are, will make the biggest impact on your life and on your financial future, you haven't even met them yet. And you can't meet them because there's no room in your life for them. Because this person here that's lowballing you has taken up space in your life. So we need to clear that out. Kind of like the feng shui you know, idea, right? And holding up things, and if it doesn't bring you joy, get rid of it, and you're making space in your life for new people to come in. 
And I'm, I'm telling you, one of my clients, I fired them recently because her husband was a jerk. He's always been a jerk. And one time he was, this, this, the morning that I walked out on them, he was being particularly nasty with me. And I just packed up and I walked out and he was like, oh, you're done already? That was fast. And I was like, no, I quit. I was like, I'm never coming back. And I, I told him right to his face, I was like, I don't like you. I never liked you, but I was trying to keep it civil. But you make it very difficult. And so I'm never coming back. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. I was like, yeah, me too. And then he was like, well, good luck with everything. I was like, yeah, thanks. And the thing is, <clears throat> I felt bad because I really like his wife and his daughter. And I love the family and I love the dog that I was grooming. But I just, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not taking this kind of treatment anymore. And a, a few weeks ago, it was a couple, like, couple months, like last month, I was thinking about calling her back and saying, like, maybe we can work it out. Maybe we can schedule it around your husband's schedule so he's not there. You know, I was I was thinking like maybe I want that business back, but I just I just you know stayed the course. I was like, no, I made the decision. I'm gonna stick with it. I got a new client. Oh my god, it's like so much better. And I never would have met them, and I never would have had them able to. I never would have been able to schedule them in my schedule had this person st still been there. You know, and every time I went there, I kind of had this feeling, this tight feeling in my chest, anxiety, because I knew I was gonna run into them, and I had to deal with them. Now I don't have that. And this new client that has replaced them, oh my God, they're like the sweetest couple in the world and I love their dog. Um, I, I, I put it on Instagram, Brody, that Bijan. Anyways, I, and, and so the thing is, sometimes when we, when we make room in our lives by getting rid of the toxic people in our lives, the new people that come in to replace them, it's like, oh my God, where have you been my whole life? You know? So the people that can make the biggest difference in your life, you haven't even met them yet. And you won't be able to if you keep these negative people around because they're taking up their space. Um, <clears throat> let's see here, Mr. Bean, oh. Lee says, thank you, bye David. See that, Lee saying bye David. I think she means bye for good. I think she's saying like, you know, bye Felicia. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, Lee, give give David another chance. You know he's all right. He just, <laughs> he just acts he just acts like that sometimes. He's not really salty. He just seems like it. <laughs> Shaking his head. No, you're a good sport, David. I try to come off as salty so when people see that I'm not, they're overly surprised, like <laughs> unexpected. He's spicy. So. He's spicy. He's not salty. <laughs> He's spicy. Anyways. Um, but, you know, that, that makes sense with just about everything in life. With, you only can fit so much on your plate. You can't add anything else onto it without falling off. But if you were the whole thing, then you have options of what you can replace it with. But yeah. if, you have a lot of negative, if you have a lot of negative things completely taking up the plate, there's no room for anything positive. You have to start removing those negative things. Exactly. Yeah, because it's 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 literally taking taking up their spot yeah. of the of the new things that can come into your life that would actually make a big positive difference. It's it's taking their spot, right? So yeah. you gotta, you got to remove them, and that way that spot is now free, and this person can now move into your life. <clears throat> um, Buffy says, "Thanks, June. Loved your chapter. Love your wise words. Oh, thank you, Buffy. You're awesome. Buffy, so awesome." Buffy's my friend, not David T's. <laughs> Lee Rally, bam, aha moment. Ooh. Aha uh, moment nice provided book. by June. Provided by June the Groomer, right? Don't... That was my nice book. <laughs> I don't think that aha moment came from David T. I, I just, I just want to make, make it clear. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're not sure because you're pretty behind on your track. I was keeping up with it. Uh huh. So I tell when that came in in the box. You think it's possible? You think it's possible that the aha moment came from you? She just said it's yes. Think. Oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. Is it is it possible? Is it true? The aha moment came from David T's mouth. Holy crap! <laughs> you live long enough. If you live long enough, you'll see all kinds of things happen in your life, like an aha moment coming from. Somebody like this guy here. <laughs> All right. Buffy says, got that right. At Lee Rally, words to live by. 
Mr. Beans, this is good advice for making friends. Exactly, exactly. Um, David T. David is, uh, Lee Raleigh says, David is awesome. And so are you, June. Yes, hello. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm probably a little bit more awesome than David T. Let's just be honest. I mean, slightly more awesome. And, and also, David T. is probably a slightly less attractive version of me. Let's see. He's a slightly less attractive version of so me myself. Turn, when you turn the camera like that, are you trying to show me? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm showing you. See that? I'm showing you. Just so people can get a reference and see when I, when I say... That's just showing me. That's just showing your webcam. Well, can you not see yourself? Don't you see yourself? I'm putting my phone up to the webcam so that people can see that I'm not lying when I say that you're a less, less attractive version of myself. No. <laughs> Buffy, nope, it was from Jude. Nope, I was keeping up. We were talking about Jude. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> Don't worry about her, man. Don't worry about Buffy. You need to go. I need to get some sleep. Holy cow! I need to go and get some sleep. Okay. Um, oh, amateur super fan says same beard. Lee says exactly. Buffy, yikes! Turn that camera around. I see him and it's very scary. <laughs> oh man, Buffy, you're you're a trip. You're so funny. Pinkie Pie, everyone on here is awesome. Thank you, Pinkie Pie. You too. You spot it. You got it. You, you can't recognize qualities in others if you don't have it in yourself. Um, here's a really cool thing. Interesting people... Uh, what is it? Interesting people see interesting things, you know? And I used to say that almost as a joke sometimes. When people would call me stupid, I'd be like, well, only stupid people see other stupid people, you know? Like, and anyways. But yeah, you spot it, you got it. When you see qualities in others, it's because you have it in yourself. So... You're awesome, Pinkie Pie. Okay, so anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hang up with David here. Actually, let me end this live stream, and that way David and I can have a little privacy. We'll have a little private talk, you know what I'm saying? Broke back style, hashtag broke back. Anyways, so good night everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really, I, I apologize that this I, I didn't plan on th all of this happening. I really planned on just reading chapter seven real quick because it was only five pages and I was gonna get out of here. But <laughs> one thing led to another and here I am having a private conversation with David T after this live stream. <laughs> oh man. Maybe I'll go back and listen to your chapter some other time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like I'm gonna watch your live stream while I pass out, something to sleep to. I need some sleeping material, you know? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you joining me tonight, and I hope that the I hope you got something of value from the chapter, um, chapter seven. Um, before everything got ruined, once this man, once this beautiful, slightly less attractive version of myself came and kind of ruined everything, you know, I apologize about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for you. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I was ignoring you, like I always do. I was talking to you. <laughs> I was talking to my fans out there. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you were talking to me because I wasn't listening. Anyways, none of it registered. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why, but whenever he talks, it's like, it's like I enter this Charlie Brown scene. You know, I hear the teacher. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, like, exactly. Did you hear that? Am I the only one hearing this? <laughs> Buffy, you can edit him out later. No, nah, I don't really do a lot of editing. You know, just whatever. You know, because I'm not out here. I have nothing to sell. You, isn't that crazy? Like, people are like, you know, anyways. Yeah, I have nothing to sell. I have no course to click. I have no link to click. I have nothing. Like, I'm just, I just want to share in my, my thoughts and, and helpful information. And I think it's pretty cool that people actually are interested in what I have to say. I think that's like the craziest thing in the world. I, I, oh my goodness. Anyways, so Buffy says, I understand completely. 
Yeah, she would, right? You got to put up with him on the daily, right? Man, at least I can ignore him. I have the option to ignore him. Man, I could just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I had things to do. I, I was walking my dogs earlier. I, I had to feed them. I had to cook dinner for myself. I was doing the dishes. And the, I don't know what happened, but I had a bunch of flies, house flies in my, in my kitchen all of a sudden. So I was going around just like a serial killer. I, I, went, I went on like a killing, killing frenzy. I mean, I just murdered like, like 15 flies, you know. But, you know, it's just... It's the kind of guy I am, and I, you know what? I even feel guilty. I was like, man, I took it. I took an oath almost, like that I was gonna value all life from now on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kill anything or, or cause harm to anything. All life has value, you know. Every life is precious. But then, when they were in my kitchen though, and landing on my my food and stuff, I got, I don't know, something came over me, and I got the fly swatter out, and I just went on a rampage, on a fly killing rampage. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm sorry. But you're owning it. I'm owning it. I'm a fly murderer. <laughs> but only when they're in my house. When they're out, I, I, don't, I don't mind when they're out in nature. Only in, in particularly my kitchen. I think that if they were flying around in my room even, I would have left them alone. But in my kitchen, where I'm cooking and food is involved, you know, I don't know. I just snapped. Something inside me just, I cracked. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, Buffy says, but he cooks for me, so that's cool. Oh, David, you cook? Wow. We are more alike than I thought. Probably slightly less talented cook than myself, but you know. <laughs> you don't know about no mise en place, David? You don't know about no mise en place? You know what I'm saying? What does it mean? Define mise en place. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Lee Raleigh says, flies have no redeeming value. What's that? What did he say? What did you just call me? <laughs> I don't know what the hell you just said, but say it's my face. <laughs> Amu's moosh. Is that what you said? I don't even know where it is. You say you know how to cook. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, at least I know the most important part of the chef's day is mise en place. He don't even know what mise en place means. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it means everything in its place. Boom. Anyways, okay. So mic drop right there. Boom. Um, flies have no redeeming value. <laughs> flies feed many animals. Amateur super fan says. Um, Buffy, dang flies. I'm a fly murderer too. My name is Buffy, and I'm a fly. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> um, Emerson, a poor spider cannot eat dinner now. Ooh. Okay, now I kind of feel bad. Yeah, but yeah, I, I really am trying to take this seriously. Like, not I'm not gonna try. I'm I'm gonna try my very best not to cause harm to any other life form. You know, the Buddha says if you cannot do good, then at least try not to do anything. You know, any harm. Yeah, right. If you. Oh, was it? Well, she took that from the Buddha. So she totally plagiarized. Bambi's mom is a plagiarist. So, but yeah, if you cannot do any any good, at least try not to do any harm. Um, perfect. But yeah, caught up on all the comments here, and I will end the stream. Thank you guys so much. Uh, maybe I might just uh, redo this chapter seven. Should I? So it's just chapter seven, and not this whole, you know, circus. That just happened when this clown showed up. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, anyways. Oh, I get why I can't see what you're saying. Because you're not showing me what you're showing. Okay. I'm looking at you in the call, not the live stream. Oh, you can see what you're showing because I'm looking at you in the call, not the live stream. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. Because this is all new to yeah. him. He's never had technology before. He, the way he grew up, I'm, he's never used I'm a computer. The, the comments, but, uh, yeah, that's how it works. That's how technology works, David. So, <laughs> he, he's never had a smartphone before. He was on the flip phone when I saw him. So, anyways, this is all new to him. <laughs> Buffy says, yes, it was funny. You were funny, Buffy. Shoot, I love Buffy. 
Oh, okay. okay. He, he's turning it. He's he's like listening back to me already. All right. So, anyways, thank you guys so much. I really gotta get going. Oh my goodness, it's twelve twelve. So I gotta get going. See you guys. Good night. All right. Boom.